strengthening may be required for a number of reasons as shown here. Uh, however, one of the largest needs is to address aged load posted bridges, such as the 1400 uh, bridges in my home state of Missouri, many of which were built from the 1930s to 1950s. In the US alone, we have more than 63,000 structurally deficient bridges in need of repair and strengthening. In the 1990s, FRP or fiber reinforced polymer products became more widely evaluated and developed in Europe, the US, Canada, Japan, and elsewhere. These included the use of impregnated sheets like carbon with an epoxy resin. While this remains a promising repair strategy, the epoxy resin has limitations in terms of higher temperature application due to its glass transition temperature. Therefore, the development of FRCM system provides a series of advantages as listed here compared to more traditional epoxy-based FRP repair systems. The cement-based mortar is made of a combination of Portland cement, silica fume, and fly ash as a, bound, uh, as a binder. The cement-based mortar also contains glass fibers to improve the bond between the PVO mesh and the cement mortar to provide better tensile properties. Uh, the base material is also more compatible with the reinforced concrete system that it is used to repair. Here you can see some of the recently cited works at the time our research efforts initiated about uh, six to seven years ago. Our efforts focused on filling current research gaps and unknowns over the past uh, six years. In our research program, we have examined gaps as highlighted in red. For today's presentation, I'll provide an overview of the fatigue work, the durability work, as well as the anchorage work. These are some of the first uh, initial studies in these particular areas. As highlighted here in bold black text, this presentation will focus on task one, task four, and task five of the overall research program due to time limitations um, today. So now let's examine the fatigue and flexural behavior of FRCM strengthened reinforced concrete members. Again, this was the first uh, major initial study on the fatigue behavior of FRCM reinforced concrete elements when our work started about six to seven years ago. The objectives of the study were to evaluate the fatigue resistance of a new innovative material in terms of member stiffness degradation during a two million cycle period of applied service load, as well as to investigate the durability of the FRCM composite after exposure to environmental conditions including temperature, moisture, and stress. This table presents the overall test matrix in this phase. The variables included the number of plies, the environmental cycles with and without stress, as well as natural exposure without stress, as well as the frequency of the applied fatigue rating. It may be noted that a collaborating institution in the US, the University of Miami, examined two ply and three ply systems while we looked at one and four. In a direct tension test, the bilinear nature of the FRCM is shown. It includes a linear elastic behavior until tensile cracks form in the FRCM system. This is followed by a second linear portion of the bilinear behavior, which represents that of the fabric. The representative properties are shown uh, for the FRCM system in table one, two. The mechanics involved include the contribution of the steel, as well as that of the FRCM system. The repair system not only adds flexural capacity, as you can see here, shown in the figure in the lower right, but also adds additional 
displacement ductility or energy to the system. This work examined the stiffness, strength, and ductility of the system. Here are the details of the reinforced concrete member, as well as the uh, mix design, as well as the FRCM matrix and rebar. It may be noted that the concrete mix properties were selected to be representative of concrete properties for older bridges that are the candidates for strengthening in Missouri. So you can see here in terms of the uh, compressive strength of the concrete, this would represent a bridge that would be strengthened, uh, built perhaps in the 1930s to 1950s. This slide highlights the process to install the FRCM system. First, surface preparation is done to open the pore structure of the concrete, followed by a base mortar. Then the cementitious mortar is applied. Then the PBO fabric is applied, followed by another layer of mortar. The last two steps are repeated if additional plies are added. For example, two plies, three plies, or four plies of reinforcement. As part of the environmental conditioning, an environmental chamber was used uh, with the conditioning protocol shown to the right. This accelerated regime simulated between 10 to 20 years of Midwest US exposure to align with the desired service life for repair systems with our Department of Transportation. And you can see it included freeze thaw cycles, hot cycles, as well as moisture. Below this is the natural environmental condition. We currently have larger full-scale beams that are still being exposed for a desired term of at least five years or more in an exterior environment to supplement this data. This slide shows the fatigue test setup and the fatigue cycling. The maximum load represents here approximately service level loading after the repair. 65% of the ultimate capacity. It may also be noted that the level of stiffness loss is rather minimal as shown at the bottom to the right. This shows the stiffness of the first 10 cycles and then the stiffness of the system after 2 million cycles. This figure shows the stiffness degradation for each 250,000 cycles of fatigue for the one-ply FRCM portion of the study. It may be noted that in general, there is a minimal drop in stiffness as initial cracks form due to the fatigue loading, and then the stiffness stabilizes. Also note that no specimens failed due to fatigue testing and all survived two million cycles. When looking at the environmental specimens that are under stress during that exposure condition, it can be seen that that sustained load stress does affect um, the stiffness of the system. This figure shows a similar stiffness degradation for 250,000 cycles with four plies of FRCM. It may be noted, again, in general, there is a minimal drop in stiffness as the initial cracks form and then the stiffness stabilizes, which is very good. Also, only the control specimen, the control specimen is a non-strength and reinforced concrete member, failed due to fatigue testing, and, re and the remainder of the specimen survived all two million cycles. In all cases, the FRCM system improved the capacity compared to the control beam without FRCM strengthening. Again, the control beam is the um, blue line in these figures. And it may be noted that the exposure conditioning, these here, um, actually improved the post-set cure of the cementitious matrix and resulted in higher capacity. The four-ply system improved the overall capacity even higher but not fourfold as it failed in a debonding fashion. The one ply failed in a uh, slippage mode. Comparing the experimental results of the testing capacity at failure after fatigue cycling 
to theoretical values based on ACI 549, it is shown that the factor of safety was over 100% for one ply and over 30% minimal for four plies, showing that our design protocol that has been developed is conservative. Summary conclusions on task one. Both fatigue and flexure tests revealed that the effectiveness of the PBO FRCM composite in restraining the reinforced concrete uh, beams against greater fatigue cracks. There were reductions in stiffness from 10 to 30 percent, um, but the flexural enhancement was between 25 to 60 percent. All specimens lasted for 2 million cycles. Uh, it's noted that the environmental exposure did not affect um, the beam's failure mode. The sustained loads reduced significantly the beam stiffness by 30 percent, but did stabilize as mentioned. And using four plies had a great influence on the fatigue performance and flexural performance as mentioned. The flexural capacity of the beam was not affected by the long-term fatigue loading. In task four, we examined the durability performance of the FRCM composite bonded to concrete substrate under different environmental aging conditions. These tests are based on a recent ACI, which stands for the American Concrete Institute 449R document that I helped co-author. And this is a new test setup. For the pullout test, shown here in the upper right, um, four exposure conditions were considered. This included environmental uh, condition cycles in the chamber that was shown earlier, 100% humidity, uh, salt water, as well as alkaline uh, solution all at room temperature. For the beam bonding test, also shown up here on the right, uh, this included the surface roughness level and the environmental conditioning in the chamber as shown earlier. Again, uh, this simulates more of the actual beam behavior than the pull-off test. Results for the pull-off test, the direct pull-off test is a highly variable test as shown by the scatter of test results. However, it does provide important details in terms of where the failure mechanism occurs in a direct tension. In this image here, you can see that the failure mode occurs between the PBO fiber and the substrate. Results from the beam bending test indicated that the lighter ICIR roughness preparation, as shown here, resulted in better bond behavior in the bending test. The environmental conditioning did not have a significant impact on the bond performance, which was a strong positive test result. To summarize, uh, task four, uh, the comparison between the two test methods revealed that the bending test for bond strength is more representative of beam behavior than the pull-off. Comparison between the bending strength with the tensile coupon testing shown earlier revealed good agreement in the ultimate strength and ultimate strain. The specimen under bending test observed the same mode of failure as the large-scale reinforced concrete beams. So this shows that this new bending test um, is a good indicator for a smaller scale evaluation. Task five. In task five, we wanted to examine how anchorage systems might be able to delay either a slippage failure or a premature debonding failure. We noted earlier um, that for four plies, the specimens failed in debonding. We examined two possible anchorage details, including a novel new approach developed at Missouri s and in this work. Here you can see the concept of an anchorage system under normal load. Uh, externally bonded systems want to debond. The concept of the anchorage system is to delay any premature failure of the external system and thereby increase the load carrying capacity using additional PBO strip and glass fiber roving as an anchoring system. The test matrix for this work included a control specimen shown here, as well as specimens with two and four plies. 
Recall that four plies resulted in a debonding failure in flexure, while plies with one or two plies failed in a slippage failure. So we also had a uh, sort of a control specimen without an anchorage detail, and then the two anchorage details I will show next. Uh, reported in this slide are the concrete mix design. Uh, again, this is representative of an older bridge without today's admixtures and the properties of an older bridge that would be a candidate for strengthening, typically around 6,000 PSI. Um, also note the cross-section and reinforcing details. It was detailed such that a shear failure would not occur, um, such that we would get the desired failure mode. The first type of anchoring system is called a glass uh, spike anchor. This detail was investigated in the 2000s at Missouri S&T as an anchoring system for the manual wet layup CFRP epoxy system that I showed earlier. We also tried this on the um, cementitious matrix system. This involves um, developing and impregnating glass fiber, creating a spike, anchoring that spike, um, putting the flexural reinforcement around the spike, and then fan fanning it out um, with uh, the matrix on top of it. Again, the idea is to prevent premature failure of the system. In the second type of this new innovative anchoring system, we called this the URAP PBO strip. And again, this was just developed at Missouri S&T for this study. Notice that this is a steel-free detail to avoid corrosion of any metal products to have an extended service life. Also note that we anchored this detail in the compression zone above the neutral axis. Tension down here, compression up here. And here you can see uh, the steps in the, the process. Again, there's a spike that is used. Um, this helps to better confine the system as opposed to that first system. This figure reports the load deformation response for both two plies and four plies with both anchoring systems, uh, as well as beams without the anchorage system and the unstrengthened control beam. The blue one is the unstrengthened control beam. For two plies, uh, had, for two plies with a slippage failure, the detail is less effective due to the failure mode, as you can see here. However, with the four ply system where there was a debonding failure uh, occurs, the anchoring system shows effective results with improvements of 10 and 24% respectively. An improvement also in ductility is evident. Shown here is for the slippage failure that occurred in the two ply system, as well as the debonding system in the four ply system and how um, the anchoring systems help to prevent that um, debonding failure for the more heavily reinforced strengthening systems. Summary, uh, the FRCM composite flexural performance can be enhanced with these anchorage systems as we saw. However, the anchorage systems effectiveness is really based on the FRCM strengthening reinforcement ratio and the mode of failure. So there was no influence really with the two ply, but much more with the four ply per se. Uh, the anchored PBO strips had a superior flexural enhancement to its high tensile pro uh, property and confining action. So we saw increases of 10 and 24% respectively. So what's next? The next step is the deployment of this uh, technology into the field into an in-situ field application case study. Um, in Missouri, we have done nearly 50 projects using advanced composite materials for repair, strengthening, or new construction. And so the next step now that we've validated a, a number of unknowns that haven't been looked at before is for field implementation and monitoring. Um, as with all research, uh, many contribute and I would like to acknowledge uh, the list of these individuals and sponsors.